I think that most scientists don't think enough about God to know whether they believe in him or not. <laughs> it's just irrelevant. I think uh, they don't even think enough about him to know whether they're atheists. But, but the bottom line is that if you look at the universe and study the universe, uh, what you'll find is that there's no evidence that we need anything other than the laws of physics and, and the other laws of science to explain everything we see. There's absolutely no evidence that we need any supernatural hand of God. But I do not believe and, uh, in an anthropomorphic God, that is somebody that's a man that, 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 that somehow or other made things. Uh, and I, uh, in, in answer to the, the question about afterlife, uh, all I can say is it would be great, but, but I, I have no uh, conviction that there is an afterlife. Altogether, I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large because they seem to be too simple, too, too connected, too local, too provincial. The earth, he came to the earth. One of the aspects of God came to the earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he, it isn't in proportion. Oh no, I've got no religious belief at all. I think it's a, I think it's a subject for comedy. It's part of the human comedy. I think science talks about the world as we have it. Religion tries to talk about what lies behind or above it. Um, Hume thinks it fails to talk about that because there's no sense to be had. All our ideas have applications in the world as we have it. So religion is actually just best. Uh, it's best when it's quiet. It's best when it's silent. I believe that I am the sum total of all of the causal influences on me at the moment, and that is not a trivial issue. So you and really believe that you're and deceiving yourself? The really interesting yourself, question is, well, if it were true, if it were true, then we'd have to abandon everything that we believe about the causal universe, about one event causing another, by all events having antecedent causes, and say that human beings are set aside from the rest of the physical world, and yet we know we're made up of the bits and stuff that the rest of the world is made up of. All the molecules in you were once upon a time in a star somewhere, and they've ended up by, in you by chance. So why not believe that we could also give an account of how those molecules working inside them produce their actions and produce this curious impression that we have of the sense of self and choice, as if there's a kind of helmsman inside there really deciding absolutely what they're going to do, irrespective of what the world tells them. I'm a cognitive psychologist who takes a thoroughly naturalistic approach to the human mind, namely the mind is a product of the brain, the brain is a product of evolution, uh, that there is no need to invoke an immaterial soul in understanding how the mind works, and therefore one of the traditional motivations for believing in a spiritual realm or a deity seems to be in the process of being undercut by the sciences of human nature such as neuroscience, evolution, and uh, genetics. My uh, so feeling about the word God is that I'm not sure if I know really what it means. I certainly have a big place in my philosophy for the unknown. Uh, I don't think at this point we have any way of knowing where the laws of physics came from. Uh, we can hope that when we really understand the laws of physics that they will describe how the universe came into existence. I have never seen much in the idea that the universe was designed. Uh, my problem with the concept is that it always seems that the designer is more sophisticated and more complicated than the object being designed. That's certainly true the way it works with cars and buildings and trucks. Uh, so. As long as one, if one is needed a designer that is more complex than the thing being designed, the designer doesn't help to explain how the design, uh, it just becomes an infinite regress. Uh, so I'll freely admit I have no idea why the laws of physics are what they are, uh, but, and I also have no idea how to even go about approaching that question. Uh, but to me, just saying that there was a designer doesn't faith. help at all. I try not to have faith. I believe in a principle that was uh, enunciated rather well by Bertrand Russell, which is that uh, you should try to keep away from having uh, irrational beliefs. You should believe some things that, uh, for which you can find some evidence or some support 
Apart from commitment to principles like equality and freedom and justice and uh, uh, so on, those, I, I wouldn't say that's faith, those are things you're committed to. But as far as beliefs about uh, the world, uh, reality, uh, my feeling is one should try to, as much as possible, uh, have substantiated beliefs, or at least uh, beliefs for which evidence could be appropriate. Are you religious? No. Be sure of that. I'm sure of that. Because I, I was brought up with some religious background, and uh, I have abandoned it. I think a, a lot of theology is um, grappling with phantoms. Uh, so theologians have invented this almost self-consistent um, subject which has no contact with physical reality at all. Um, and they invent all sorts of questions which they then taunt humanity with. Um, one of them is um, cosmic purpose. And they say there must be a purpose you and your science can't explain it and typical of theologians they don't respect the power of the human intellect anyway and they infer that no one will ever understand it it is ineffable a god some purpose cannot be discerned and of course that's um those are fine words but utterly meaningless i mean there's not why should the thing have a purpose? I mean, for myself, I'm a sort of quiet, old Jewish atheist. I'm, um, I'm not a militant atheist. I, I, I don't sort of argue about things like Dawkins and Dennett and Sam Harris. I, I quite like their books, but, uh, but I'm not militant by nature. And I'm not very argumentative by nature. And if people want to believe, well, then that's their business. I mean, what concerns me is, is when belief is used to influence and corrupt educational politics. And it seems to me monstrous that creationism or so-called intelligent design is, 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 is taught next to evolution or, or instead of it. And uh, I, I do think of it as a, almost as a form of madness. Another thing which I think science of any kind teaches us is that even the simplest things are hard to understand. A hydrogen atom, for instance. And that makes me rather suspicious of anyone who claims to have a quick and easy answer to any deep aspect of reality. And I think the most we can hope for is an incomplete and metaphorical understanding. And therefore, I'm not myself someone who can accept any specific religious dogma. In, in terms of religious views, I would say I'm actually an agnostic. Mm. on the grounds of, I don't know, mm. uh, there's no scientific proof of one thing or another, so I take that view. Why are you not a Christian? Because I see no evidence whatever for any of the Christian dogmas. I've examined all the stock arguments in favour of the existence of God, and none of them seem to me to be logically valid. Do you think there's a practical reason for having um, a religious belief for, for many people? Well, there can't be a practical reason for believing what isn't true. Uh, that's quite, uh, at least I rule it out as impossible. Either the thing is true or it isn't. If it is true, you should believe it, and if it isn't, you shouldn't. And uh, if you can't find out whether it's true or whether it isn't, you should suspend judgment. M theory doesn't disprove God, but it makes him unnecessary. It predicts that the universe will be spontaneously created out of nothing without the need for a creator. Uh, irrational thinking um, of any kind uh, is uh, very dangerous. I mean, if you look around and uh, the very large contrast uh, that exists because of, um, you know, irrational uh, motivations, uh, they are very dangerous. Um, and I wish that uh, with the progress of science, uh, we could inject a little bit more rationality in the, in the world, but uh, that's hard to... So in that sense we have failed. I mean, the, we are no, no more rational today, I think, than we were at the time of the Greeks, actually. I, with that. I hold open the door. I'm not going to close the door on the need for something supernatural, but I think we have no reason to believe in it now. 
all the progress we've made in, in um, explaining what appears to be something supernatural in natural terms leads me to be optimistic that we can explain everything in naturalistic terms. Do you believe in an afterlife? Um, well, uh, such beliefs, I think, are, are related to, to, to religions of, of the past, and I don't, uh, I, I don't think a notion such as afterlife uh, has any, you know, sort of scientific basis, not in terms of modern science. So I can only say no. When I was younger, I used to sing in a church choir. It wasn't religious, I just liked the singing. And there was a lot of talk of souls and spirits and things. And by the time I was about 13, I realized the whole thing was really pretty illogical. I mean, I am just flesh and blood. I, I think atheists get a sort of bum rap that, you know, we're just heartless and we, you know, don't care for people or we totally reject the values we've been brought up on. And, you know, you know it's me, it's just, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, most of the ideas of Christianity, you know, sound good, but in reality some of them aren't very good, but, uh, you know, they sound good and uh, so it makes a good funeral. Suppose you take as a moral principle, it's wrong to steal. Why is, people say now, why is that wrong? Why is it wrong to steal? Answer, because God says it's wrong to steal. God commanded that it, you should not steal. Okay. The, the point that Socrates makes in that, in that dialogue is to say, well, how can God give this moral rule a foundation? Either the moral rule is itself intrinsically a sound moral rule, or it can't be given soundness and legitimacy from an external command. Suppose, for example, we had the, the rule, it's right to murder. And somebody said, that's not right. Murder is wrong. And somebody said in reply, but God says it's right to murder. That doesn't convince you that it's right to murder. If God says that something is right which isn't right, God's wrong. And uh, I don't know what your own religious faith is. Or... Well, well I, 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 I'm not a believer, I, uh, uh, but I, I love... So Are you an agnostic or an atheist, would you say? Well, that's a good question. I, I mean, I think um, when Darwin, his response when he was asked whether he was an atheist was, well, I, I, um, I don't know, so I, 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 I'm agnostic. I think actually I'm an atheist when it comes mm -hmm. when, when all is said and done. I mean, if, I, if I, I'm really honest about it, because I, don't, I, really, I really don't believe in a God. I, mean, I often get letters, quite frequently, of people who say, uh, how they like your programmes a lot, but I never give credit uh, to the almighty power that created nature. Uh, to which I, know, I reply and say, well, it's, it's funny that the people, people, when they say that this is evidence of, of almighty, always quote beautiful things. They always quote orchids and hummingbirds and butterflies and roses. But I always have to think, too, of a, a little boy sitting on the banks of a river in West Africa who has a worm boring through his eyeball, turning him blind before he is five years old. And I reply and say, well, presumably the god you speak about created the worm as well. Uh, and now I find that baffling uh, to credit uh, a, a merciful god, that, that action. And therefore, it seems to me safer to show things that I know to be truth truthful and factual and allow people to make up their own mind about you know, the moralities of this thing or, or indeed the, the theology of this thing. For science it's very essential that we take a position that through the scientific method that keeps us away of all the irrationalities that seem to dominate human activities and I think we should stay there and the fact that I'm busy and science has little or nothing to do with religion. In fact, I protect myself. I don't want to have to do with religion because once I started that, I don't know where I will end. <clears throat> but probably I will be burnt or shot or something in the end. Uh, I won't have nothing to do with it. I'm just talking about things I can observe and other things that I can predict and for the rest you sure, can have and, it. And you know, I was brought up in a culture where no one is religious and where no one educated in particular is religious. It's completely sort of exotic. Um, so, of course, for me, it would seem that 
um, being a religious, which doesn't mean really what atheism is like. I mean, people think of people who are against religion. But it's just a sort of indifference religion. In most of Western Europe, for many you know decades or may maybe centuries, now it's been the sort of default mode. People are not terribly interested. Then, has religion been important to you? No, no, not a bit. Um, I'm certainly not religious in the in any conventional sense of the term, uh, in the sense of a deity or. Mm. But I have n I'm never had any hostility towards mm. religion, except in the obvious sense when it turns ugly, mm. which it so often and does. The intellectual mm. respectability of a claim that there are gods, say the gods of Olympus or the gods of Hinduism, or one god, say the god of Christianity, seems to me to be exactly on a par with the intellectual respectability of thinking that there are fairies in your garden. Belief in fairies was very, very widespread and very well attested right up into the late 19th century. Indeed, people believed that fairies were much more present in their lives than God was because things that went missing, like your shoelaces or a teaspoon or something, had been nicked by them. So the comparison here is, is not a jokey one. And if you think that the reasons you have for thinking that there are fairies are very poor reasons, that it's irrational to think that there are such things, then belief in supernatural agencies in general is irrational in that way. So for me it's it's a question of the rationality of belief and agnostics who think that there is as much chance that there might be such entities as that there might not be such entities fall foul of this stricture. Are you a religious person? Absolutely not. Can you say more about that? Well you could say all sorts of things by that and offend people maybe but the the fact is that I'm, I'm not religious and uh, I don't like religion, and I think religion is to blame for a lot of the ills in this world. The reason that this is such an important issue is we would all like to believe uh, that there is a meaningful uh, world beyond our own capacity to inject meaning into it. We'd like to suppose that life goes on after our own death. We would like to believe that the people we most love will continue to exist, and it's very hard to be told that all these wonderful people will cease to exist altogether. Furthermore, another feature is we'd like there to be justice in the end. Mm. Since it's obvious that there's no justice here on Earth, we'd very much like there to be a divine justice which will come. But the problem is those are things we'd like to believe, and we really have no evidence to suppose that they're true, and we ought methodologically be, to be suspicious of believing as something that we very much want to believe, something that would uh, make us immensely uh, satisfied, which would make us happier if we could believe it. I think religion is here to stay because it does satisfy these needs, but intellectually I don't think you can justify it. The arguments for God's existence are uniformly bad. Uh, are you agnostic? Are you uh, an atheist? Well, do you have any, uh, uh, f do you want to have a faith in uh, the unknown or is science your God? Yes, it, it is in the sense that I li I'm comfortable with the unknown. That's the, that's the point of science. It's, it, the, the, it, it, there are places out there, obviously billions of places, that we know nothing about. And the fact that we know nothing about them excites me, and I want to go and find out about them. And that's what science is. So I think, I think if you're not comfortable with the unknown, it's very difficult to be, to be a scientist. So I don't need an answer. I don't need answers to everything. I, I want to have answers to find. But, but well, that brings you have no belief that there's an afterlife. That's correct. And in the pattern of elementary particles and the constants that I mentioned and so on, you don't see the evidence of a designer? No, I don't. I think Could you say more about it? I think this is wishful thinking. Wishful? Yes. I mean, if some people, uh, if they uh, ask... Uh, um, there are some people who see the evidence of some sort of design, and I just do not accept that thinking. I have no desire whatsoever to push this view on others. Uh, and uh, if you hadn't asked me about this, I wouldn't have mentioned it. But I'm also not reluctant uh, to say so when I'm asked. Not only do I think the arguments for God's existence don't work, I think that this, more importantly to me, does not look like the kind of world, empirically, 
uh, that is created by a good and caring and powerful God. It just, uh, to me, uh, there's just too much empirical evidence against it. Uh, if you're raised in India, the probability you have a vision of the Virgin Mary would not be very high, whereas you're raised in Spain, it might be much higher, right? So what we know is that a person's culture, the family in which he or she was raised, has a real impact upon the content of the experience, right? And the question is whether, given that so, it's reasonable to believe that nonetheless, there is a core that's reliable. Right. I'm an atheist, and um whatever that is, an agnostic atheist, I'm not going to find touch. I mean, I, I like to think that most science is atheistic. Um, there are a few scientists, less than 10% who believe in God, but of the major scientists, 90, more than 90% are atheists, and they transfer their own, the aspects of science to their everyday life, which I think is an intellectual um, is, issue for me. Um, I, it's not that I don't need some mystical thing, it's just that I don't accept it, and I think people who do accept it, they have a tremendous Achilles heel um, in the sense that they accept anything, any old story from anywhere, a thousand years old, <laughs> which is no evidence, and these people bother me because they're in positions of power and responsibility, and when people are prepared to accept you know, one of 20 or 30 different stories from thousands of years ago, I wonder what else they're prepared to accept when it comes to decisions which affect me. I don't believe that the universe was designed by an intelligence. I believe the universe was designed the same way uh, the incredible human being was designed. It certainly looks, and before Darwin, it looked like some designer. Must have, what else could possibly account for the complexity of a human being, the human brain, and so forth? And we eventually found out what it was. It was random mutation, a bunch of carbon, oxygen, and other stuff for that mutation to work on, and a little bit of everything evolved. Some things did better than others. Those things are more populous than the things that didn't do well, and so it was basically randomness, statistics, and the laws of physics that, uh, that uh, led to our own design. I think the same is true of the universe. I think that there are two kinds of atheists. There are those like Feuerbach or the Marxists who think that while they are materialists, what's interesting about religions in all forms is perhaps especially for them the Christian religion that it embodied but also interestingly deformed various very deep human yearnings and aspirations, and that it's a, a, a very powerful route into trying to understand human psychology, to understand the religious urge. That's one kind of atheist who thinks well, it, it, none of it's really true, but it is very, very important, it's very interesting, it's very deep. There's another kind of atheist, which is David Hume or Bertrand Russell, who thinks, well, I mostly can't understand what these people are claiming. But insofar as I understand what they're claiming, it's obviously false. And I'm that kind of atheist. It just doesn't interest me at all. But I mean, would you think that there is life after death, for example, for the individual? I cannot see that, not for an individual. Or that there's heaven and hell. Obviously not, if you no, can't no. see that. So when you think about the fundamental constants and the precision with which you see into atoms and so on. Does that relate to, in any way to an intelligent design or um, a religious approach to the world? Uh, My question is very I, I, I mean, uh, naturally, all the things around us look like they are, have been designed intelligently, and so the principles that led to their uh, being, of course, in some ways, imply some intelligence, but that need, need not be the intelligence in a person-like being. That's just the intelligence in this whole mechanism, how, how nature evolves. I think the question, is there a God, falls into the category of a physical, empirical question. God is supposed to be somebody who created the world. Is there somebody, is there a, a, a person who created the world? That's a perfectly clear question with, with a right answer. And I think it needs to be handled in the way we handle other questions about the physical world, namely by looking for evidence. 
So I don't think that's a factually empty question. It could turn out. Isn't that a category mistake? Trying to trying to uh, prove something in the physical world, something that is by definition outside of it. Well, you could find evidence for it. I mean, if he created the world, then there might be evidence that he created the world. So it's not completely isolated. Abstract objects are completely isolated, so it would be, I think, a, catamor a category mistake to look for evidence of abstract objects in the physical world. So I think that's not an empirical question. I think that is a factually empty question. <laughs> but the, the, the God question is different because God is supposed to interact with the physical world. He made the world. And so we could look for evidence of it. If there is evidence, then I'd say, okay, believe in God. When so you I, die, is that it? Of course. And there is no entity with any, that you, a creative entity with any uh, interest in you? No. Okay. Um, one of my uncles is quite an evangelical Christian, and so I'd been to boy, boys' boarding camps with Christian, sort of uh, fairly evangelical Christians. <clears throat> but I began to question this and wonder whether God really intended to cast three quarters of humankind into outer darkness because they'd never heard of him. And uh, none of the Christians I talked to could quite explain what his intention was in creating such a situation. So I lost my formal faith, but in anthropology I found an alternative framework which explains much of what goes on in the world without having to induce, uh, induce God. Uh, look so, at all the things that just want to kill us, okay? Uh, most planet orbits are unstable, uh, star formation is completely inefficient, most places in the universe will kill life instantly, instantly. The people that say, oh, the forces of nature are just right for life. Excuse me, <laughs> just look at the volume of the universe where you can't live. You will die instantly. That is not, that's not, that's not what I call the Garden of Eden, all right? Uh, uh, galaxy orbits that we orbit once every couple hundred million years, you're bound to come close to a supernova that will wipe out your ozone layer and kill everybody on the surface who doesn't otherwise have dark skin because your high energy rays will give you skin cancer. Um, we're on a collision course with the Andromeda galaxy, gone is this beautiful spiral that we have, and of course we're on a one-way expanding universe as we wind down to oblivion as the temperature of the universe asymptotically pro approaches absolute zero. That's the universe! Then Earth, volcanoes, tsunami just killed, uh, you know, I think that number is higher, up 200,000 people, floods, tornadoes. None of this is any sign that there's a benevolent anything out there. Uh, but and, I, I certainly have no uh, idea of what God might be if he was some great deity that created the universe and defined the physical laws. Um, so be it. Uh, but I, I sort of personally doubt that that God intervenes in my own life. One of the things that phenomenology is going to do is talk about religious experience. Mm -hmm. And we don't need, as you'll see in a minute, to bring in God. And so we can go along with Nietzsche and suppose God is dead as far as our culture is concerned. <laughs> it no longer is a religious culture. It's a secular culture. And yet there is religious experience and lots of need for religion in our culture taking weird forms, fanatical forms, and phenomenology might be able to help with that, getting it religion back into the form where it was a positive thing that gave meaning to people's lives and didn't need an all-powerful an all uh, uh, creator, uh, high, what is it, the highest being kind of God. I've always had a, a skeptical streak about anything uh, really, um, and I think my scepticism developed and developed while I was at school, uh, and uh, so I've never found it possible to be a profound believer uh, in uh, the Trinity or in the Christian, whether Anglican or Catholic, uh, concept of uh, God and uh, Christ and so on. What is faith? It is belief in the absence of evidence. Now, I don't propose to tell anybody what to believe, but for me, believing when there's no compelling evidence is a mistake. The idea is to withhold belief until there is compelling evidence. And if the universe does not comply with our predispositions, okay, then we have the wrenching obligation to... Uh, accommodate to the way the universe really is. I think it would be a totally monstrous doctrine to believe 
that God would create a world in which, let's say, a two-year-old child would die a slow and lingering death from hunger and thirst because that baby's alleged ancestor, ancestors Adam and Eve, sinned. Again, I would think that would be a monstrous God who could make a baby suffer for that reason. But even if you still think that, even if you still think that the suffering of that baby is somehow deserved because of original sin, what about the suffering of non-human animals? They also die slow, miserable deaths through droughts or hunger or disease or a variety of other causes. And not even Christians believe that they suffer from original sin. They're not descended from Adam. And that suffering has been going on even longer than human suffering because they've been sentient beings, sentient animals, for even longer. Some people may feel they have to understand everything. I don't feel that. I feel that eventually a lot more will be understood. And this deals with subjects that have nothing to do with religion. But I'm willing to tackle certain problems, try to understand those, realize there are other problems that I just won't be able to solve. I, I don't have the expertise, and even if I did, I might not be able to solve it. But I'm willing to live with that. I suppose technically I'm an agnostic in the Huxley sense of the word that, mm -hmm. um, that you know, one cannot be absolutely certain, but for all practical purposes I'm an atheist, um, mm -hmm. a very materialistic mm -hmm. atheist. I think you know, what you see is what you get. You think that God can be put to a scientific test like everything else, and if God is God, God is beyond the, verific the, the observation and verification process of science. Oh, God is very definitely beyond the verification process of science. God has been designed to be beyond the verification process of science. This is one of the, one of the, the classic adaptations of religions, is to, is to create this gulf so that, so that science can't get anywhere near God. That's true. But science can understand that very fact. You say that well, science God can understand. Science can understand how religions evolved and why, by the way, that idea is completely absent in folk religions, which are the ancestors. The idea of, the idea of God being, as it were, beyond science. They don't make a distinction between science and religion. The, folk religions, it's all the same. It's all one. This is just what everybody knows. And they have no concept of faith. They don't need a concept of faith. It's only once you start getting this separation between science and other things that people think they know when maybe they don't, that's when the idea of faith looms and becomes a very attractive idea. And indeed it is. It protects the idea of God from uh, disproof. I have a friend, or had a friend, now dead, Abdus Salam, a very devout Muslim who was trying to bring science into the universities in the Gulf states and he, he told me that he had a terrible time because um, although they were very receptive to technology they felt that science would be a corrosive to religious belief and they were worried about it and damn it I think they were right it is corrosive of religious belief and it's a good thing too.